hello. Here we are standing near the ruins of the Byzantine church, which was built on the spot where Jesus had broken the bread. Yeah. So we have the story of Jesus coming to Emmaus in, in the New Testament, in the Gospel of Luke. Uh, the Gospel of Luke tells us that on the day when Jesus rose from the dead, uh, two of his disciples, who didn't, he didn't know yet that Jesus rose from the dead, they were going from Jerusalem to Emmaus, and they were sad because uh, the teacher was dead. And suddenly uh, they met a man who started to walk with them and ask them, why are you so sad? So they explained him that the teacher was dead and they had hoped that he was the Messiah. So that man told them that the Messiah had to suffer, to die and to rise from the dead. And he explained them from the scripture, all these prophecies about the Messiah. And when they came to Emmaus, they invited him to their house. And uh, when he broke the bread at the table, they recognized him, that he was uh, Jesus. Yeah? who was alive. So they returned to Jerusalem to tell others that they saw the risen Jesus. So this story about Emmaus is very famous and the Christian pilgrims coming to the Holy Land have always wanted to visit the place. Uh, so we have a very ancient testimonies about this place already. We have a very ancient testimony of uh, a bishop of Caesarea, Eusebius of Caesarea, who wrote a book uh, about all the places of the Holy Land. This book is called Onomasticon, and it was written uh, in the 3rd century AD, in the end of the 3rd century AD, about the year 2095 AD, is during the Roman times, before the Byzantine times even. And in this book, he speaks about Emmaus, and he says that Emmaus today is Nicopolis. So as we have said already, Nicopolis is the Roman name of this place. As the Romans started to live here, after Bar Kokhba's revolt, starting with the 2nd, 3rd century AD, the Romans expelled the Jews from Emmaus and created a city which was called Nicopolis. And Eusebius of Caesarea, who was a Christian bishop, he was a Roman, he was not Jewish. And when he speaks about Emmaus, he says Emmaus today is Nicopolis, a famous city of Palestine. So it is a very, very important testimony. Uh, that uh, the first Christians considered this place, Emmaus Nicopolis, to be the place where Jesus appeared after his resurrection. Uh, now, we have also a very important testimony of Saint Jerome, uh, who was a monk in Bethlehem in the 4th century AD, and who translated the Bible into Latin. He visited this place 100 years after Eusebius, in the, about the year 395 or 380, 390, and he writes in one of his letters that he saw here the house of Jesus, the house of Cleophas, where Jesus entered and broke the bread, as it is written in the Gospel of Luke. So, and Jerome says that this house was venerated by Christians, it became a church. So, uh, we can uh, make the conclusion that the first Christians venerated this house, and the tradition uh, survived from the first century till the time of Je Jerome, till the fourth century. And in the fifth, sixth century, a bigger church was built on this spot. So we he see here the ruins of this church. Uh, we see this apsis, yeah? Mm -hmm. This wall is Byzantine. Mm -hmm. So it's very ancient, it is 1,500 years old. And there was a, a very big church here yeah. in, in the fifth, sixth, seventh century, till the Muslims came. Mm -hmm. yeah? Uh, this place was a very big town, Christian town of Nicopolis, which existed during the Byzantine times. Mm -hmm. And many pilgr pilgrims were coming here. We have many testimonies of pilgrims coming to pray here. And this church was going up to there, so it was rather big, up to the entrance of our site. Uh, so these walls are, uh, were built later. Yeah? So it went up to the, the, the gate. gate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, up to the road there. Uh -huh. And this church was the pilgrimage center where pilgrims were coming to pray. Mm -hmm. yeah. There is also a testimony of some Byzantine authors who say that there was a water spring here, mm -hmm. which according to tradition was the spring where Jesus had washed his feet. Mm -hmm. So many pilgrims were coming to bathe to receive a healing in this spring. Yeah. So this spring existed till, uh, also till Muslims came. We don't have any testimonies after the Muslim time.
Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the Muslims came, the place was abandoned because of an uh, epidemic of a plague. Mm -hmm. And uh, when the Crusaders came in the 11th century, end of 11th, beginning of the 12th century. How long was that after it shut down? Uh, so the Muslims came in the year 640. And uh, more or less at the same time, the place was abandoned. And the Crusaders came in the year 1099. Years, yeah, and the place was rebuilt in 1140. 1140. So it, it took about 500 years till the place was rebuilt. Mm -hmm. And the place, the, these, these walls were built by Crusaders. This is a Crusader church. So the Crusaders. The Crusaders used the old the Byzantine church, yeah. built the Byzantine wall, mm -hmm. and they added their own building to it. Left on the left, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So... And was there a town again afterwards? As well? we, don't, we don't have much information about the Crusader times. We know that there was a Crusader castle, not far from here, one kilometer to the south, mm -hmm. which was built by a, a Spanish noble. Mm -hmm. And this Spanish noble gave the castle to the Templars, Knight Templars. Mm -hmm who were sitting here, not far from the British police, which we saw there, yeah. just in front of it. The British police was built much later, yeah, but the, the Crusaders were there. <laughs> yeah. And uh, so they were also um, keeping the road safe for the pilgrims who were coming from Jaffa to Jerusalem. Because the pilgrims have always arrived to this country by ship to Jaffa, mm -hmm. and we were walking up through by this road to Jerusalem so so which is now the main uh, motorway to Jerusalem that was yeah the more or less the same spot yeah the, 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 the highway passes on the same spot mm -hmm. and uh, so the Crusaders were here for 100 years mm -hmm. we know also from the history that also King of in England Richard the Lionheart mm -hmm. spent several days in this castle yeah mm -hmm. so probably he visited this church too but we don't have a direct testimony about this uh -huh. and here's the church you see it again First on the right, this is the, the first church and the crusader built the big one next to it and I film it all the way through and you see it went all the way down the original one and the crusader one is smaller and stops here. Yeah, now, okay. Yeah. Now when the crusaders left, the crusaders were expelled from here by Muslims. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the, the Muslim leader was uh, Salah Haddin or Saladin. Mm -hmm. We have a movie. There's a movie. Oh, you have no? okay. So you watch the movie. Okay, so yeah. now you can uh, understand that the very important battles yeah. between Saladin and Richard the Lionheart took place in this uh, region, uh -huh. near Jaffa, near to Jaffa, between Jaffa and Jerusalem. Uh, so when the Muslims expelled the Crusaders from the country, mm -hmm. they took over this place, mm -hmm. and they returned to this place the ancient name of Emmaus. Yeah, because this in Arabic they call this place Amwas, mm -hmm. Amwas. Mm -hmm. So uh, this place till now is called Amwas, Emmaus by Arabs. Okay. Uh, there was also a Muslim village here mm -hmm. uh, till the 12th, 20th century. Mm -hmm. The village was destroyed during the Six Day War in 1967. Mm -hmm. So not very long ago, about 50 years ago, it was destroyed. But till 1967, the place was uh, occupied by Muslims and also these ruins were Muslim property mm -hmm. and the, no archaeological excavations were possible it was only in 1880 in 1880 uh, that a holy nun from Bethlehem Mariam Bawardi mm -hmm. had the a vision of, of yeah, Bethlehem, yeah, yeah she had a vision of Jesus uh -huh. who told her about Emmaus. She saw Emmaus in a vision and uh, she told her sisters that she would recognize the place that she had seen in a vision. And later on the sisters traveled here, not far from here, they traveled along the road to Jaffa and they stopped nearby in Latrun uh, to change horses and suddenly uh, Mariam uh, started to run. She entered, entered in ecstasy and she came she came running to this place in fact all this this church was not visible at that period in the end of the 19th century it was still covered everything was covered with earth mm -hmm. in fact all these walls were not visible what was is visible only several stones up there the highest stones were visible above the ground but oh. mo uh -huh. most of the church was covered with uh, ground uh -huh. and um, uh, saint Mariam st stood near these stones there on the top 
And she said, this is the place that she, I saw in the vision where Jesus broke the bread. So she confirmed her, by her revelation, she confirmed what we know already from all the ancient Christian tradition. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. And uh, that's why the nuns received a donation to buy this place from the Muslims. So uh, in the end of the 19th century, the place was bought and the excavation started. So the, uh, all this church was found. What was clean from the earth? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we can go inside the church to yeah. see it. Let's yeah. Go. Yeah. And the walls, they were all intact. Uh, that's, what that's what they found. That's what they found. Okay. Yeah. Unbelievable. Here we are in the church now. Yeah. Yeah. So th all this was discovered in the end of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. Uh, so we are standing in the main apse of the Byzantine church. Mm -hmm. yeah. It was a very big church and center of pilgrimage in the years, in the centuries five, six, seven. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, the Crusader church. Yeah. In the Byzantine church, there were three naves. Yeah, now we see only one nave of the Crusader church. Yeah, that's one. But in the Byzantine church, there were three naves mm -hmm. separated by very beautiful columns. And this, uh, the we, know that we found that there were some st uh, stones found, some um, columns, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. But also, it's typical for Byzantine, uh, Byzantine times, yeah. Mm -hmm. This is called the basilica, a basilica with three naves, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. And the Crusader Church was built in the uh, Romanesque style. Mm -hmm. We can see the entrance to the Crusader Church. So this is the stones from the Crusader time. Uh -huh. yeah. This is the entrance to the, the Crusader Church. church yeah. Yeah. You can see a typical Romanesque door. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Wow. The uh -huh. yeah, we don't know who destroyed the Crusader Church. We don't have information about it. Mm -hmm. Probably the Muslims after the Crusaders left. Mm -hmm. uh, so the Crusaders were not archaeologists. When they built their church, they built it directly on the ruins of Byzantine time. Mm -hmm. So, when the archaeologists started to excavate here, around, they found Byzantine mosaics. Wow. And some of them go under the Crusader building. Unbelievable. Still. Uh -huh. But now these mosaics are covered with the earth to protect them. Mm -hmm. Some of the mosaics are open there for, to see for the visitors. Mm -hmm. So, in fact, the Byzantine church was larger, yeah? so it was going up to there where the row of stones is. Uh -huh. And even further, because there was an atrium. Uh -huh. uh, it's like... Uh, a courtyard yeah. in front of the churches was f further on to the road. Uh -huh. yeah. Amazing. Yeah. So all this was excavated during in the, ex in the end of the 19th century and also in 1920s there was another uh, time of excavations by the Dominican Fathers of Jerusalem. Mm -hmm. yeah. We can down here from the Ecole Biblique. Yeah, from the Ecole Biblique. School, okay. yeah. We can see that they also yeah. found the baptistry there. We shall see oh, it. Okay. Now we go to the Baptist. Baptistry. Baptistry. Baptist. Okay. So this is a uh, baptistry, you can yeah. see it from here or from here. Uh, so this baptistry was found in the excavations in the end of the 19th century. Mm -hmm. Initially it was inside another church. There was another church building here, which included this baptistry. Mm -hmm. We call it the Northern Basilica. Mm -hmm. The Southern Basilica is here. And the, yeah. Yeah, and the Northern Basilica here with the baptistry. Mm -hmm. So the baptistry is something very important because in the Byzantine times, only bishops were baptizing, not the ordinary priest. Uh -huh. So it also testifies to the fact there was a bishop here. It was a bishopric, bis bishop's see. Mm -hmm. yeah? So it ra was a rather important town with a bishop. So people were coming to be baptized. People were coming in procession 
there were several steps, several uh, stages of the ceremony to be baptized. So this baptistry was originally 70 centimeters above the ground. It was, it had a, a rim, mm -hmm. 70 centimeters high rim. Mm -hmm. So it was deeper also. Mm -hmm. And it, when it was found in the end of the 19th century, it was still intact. It was still complete. And the archaeologists built a roof here to protect it. Mm -hmm. And during the First World War, the Turkish army was camping here in the ruins. So they wanted to use this place with a roof to put there the horse of the commander. Mm -hmm. So that's why they, bro they broke the upper part of the Baptist, in fact. Yeah. Oh, that's uh, why you have this now. Uh, yeah, so uh, today we st can still use it. We can still fill it with water and sometimes there are some baptisms here. Yeah. Uh -huh. The small compartment was probably for the baptism of a child. Mm -hmm. So, uh -huh. and here under the tree there is also a water cistern. Mm -hmm. The water cistern. So here we are near the water cistern, which was supplying water to the baptistry. Yeah. Oh really? From there it came. Uh -huh. Yeah. So because the he it doesn't rain here in summer, mm -hmm. so people used to gather water, rainwater, in, in such cisterns, mm -hmm. even till the 20th century. But this uh, cistern is from the 6th century, maybe. Mm -hmm. And there is even a channel in the wall. You see the channel here. This kind of channel. Uh, yeah, yeah, he comes down. Yeah, this you channel. Here it is. Yeah, uh -huh. it was bringing the water to the Baptist. Uh, it's going over there. Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. Unbelievable. Okay, so yeah. now let's go to see the modern history with the new building. Yeah.